Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for coming back to Ron's Bikes TV for 2024. Um, I'm hoping to make some more videos this year. Thanks for all your likes last year, and I hope you uh, like and subscribe some more this year. This is a video about uh, cold weather riding. Uh, I wanted to release it a lot sooner, but it was a pretty busy uh, holiday season here at ronsbikes.com. So, you know, I wanted to get this up earlier and uh, it's, I'm never early with anything as it turns out. You know that, you know that feeling after you ride, no matter how hard or how miserable you were when you were out there, you get back and you're already reminiscing, right? You're already nostalgic for that, that ride that you just did. It just makes you feel good. No matter what you get into while you're out there, if you come back in one piece, generally, you're gonna feel better about yourself and you're gonna be a better version of yourself for your, for your family and loved ones. Riding year round is extremely important for that. I know for me, uh, especially in these uh, colder months when you have a lot less sun, um, you know, it could seem really hard to get out. It could be really easy to get into that um, self-perpetuating cycle of inactivity that a lot of us fall into in the winter time and I hope this video helps you a little bit and uh, helps you dress right and uh, have some good times out there this winter because you know riding year-round no matter where you are and as I'm gonna show you really with the right clothing it can be done so let's go check me out good afternoon folks Ooh, the weather outside is frightful It doesn't look so frightful out there at all, actually. More like 39, 40 degrees. We want to go for a ride. How's that sound? All right, good afternoon, everybody. How's it going? How's the winter treating you so far? Let me know in the comments. I'd lo I, you know, I love talking about weather. People are like, hey, you know, weather's just small talk. Weather is the talk of the town when you live outside. You know, and if you ride your bike outside, I know Zwift and Zwift and Sift and Shake and Bake, all those apps that you uh, can ride your bike on. Um, nothing, nothing against those, honestly. I think that's a, a great way to keep the pedaling motion going indoors. For me personally, I like to ride outdoors. So, um, luckily, I live in a part of uh, New England that is uh, as far south as you can go and still be in New England. That's very important to me. Generally, we could ride all winter. If it snows, maybe I'll uh, go sledding. So riding outside all winter, of course, takes some planning and takes some specific gear and different gear than you might think. Uh, different gear for me personally, different gear than what uh, has been advertised to me over the years by the bike industry at large. I find that you need you need specific clothing, but it's not as high tech, uh, thought out, over engineered. Um, apparel that you may expect it to be or that we associate with sport in general. As you know, uh, I'm a big fan of wool and other natural fibers and in this video here we're going to go over uh, a few specific items that you may want to consider uh, as part of your wardrobe or kit for riding through the winter. Some tips on lights and dynamos. What types of rides are going to keep you the warmest? Um, and also, what do I wear? What bags you might need? Let's snort this snow cone, shall we? Generally, the determining factor for the type of bike or bag setup you want for your winter ride depends upon what you're looking to get out of your winter ride. So when I want to take a more relaxed, less spirited ride in the winter, uh, that means I'm going to be stopping more. And of course, when you stop, your heart's not pumping the blood, making your making all your extremities warm anymore and you start getting cold really rapidly. So I always like to bring some extra layers with me, um, maybe something insulated that I could sit on and, uh, you know, a warm beverage also. Uh, in order to accommodate the extra luggage I bring on a cold weather, relaxing tourist pace ride, uh, I want to make sure that I have a, a large enough bag. Generally either a small or a large Fabio's chest. Um, and what I'll put in here is, you know, I could bring, you know, like a puffer jacket. I could bring my, I could bring my down pants. Um, you know, you could really, really set yourself up for a nice relaxing stop in the woods to drink your tea. You know, and not have to worry about 
any like Donner Party situation going on, you know, when you're just trying to have a nice relaxing afternoon after work, you know? It's a nice day for a bike ride. It's a nice day. Then if I want to get really pared down, I find that I need even less than I need in the summertime because I'm not stopping at all once I get out there. If I'm not carrying any bags with me, I'm not carrying any provisions to stop and relax and snack and do whatever I like to do in the summertime. It's all about getting out there and getting back to your, um, your warm home. Now many of you in the Northwest or something would probably put fenders on this bike. Here in the Northeast, uh, uh, where we could still ride in the woods most of the year in the southern part like I was saying the sticks They just rip fenders apart and if you like to keep a nice tight fender line like I do they'll they will absolutely uh, Dismantle your artistic integrity on the bicycle because your fenders will be all over the place So just be you'll be pedaling around a pile of wreckage everything rubbing and you know after an eight-hour Hanjo fender install I'm, I'm triggered, I'm scarred, obviously. This is, brings up bad memories for me. So I went ahead and did it. Spent six hours last weekend during a snowstorm. Uh, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go outside. Uh, I'm gonna go for a ride in the snow, but I need some fenders. Um, and I had bought these Hanjo uh, 700 by, I think they're 60, 60 wide, uh, to wrap over these 700 by 42s. It took me six hours. I think they look sweet, right? And this bike is still super light, even with them. It's pretty wild. Worth the stress sweats of the installation process? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, this is strictly to get the miles in, enjoy the ride, and get back home and chill. Smaller water bottles because um, I tend to prehydrate and then post-hydrate. While I'm riding, the last thing I want is cold water in my mouth, so. Sub-freezing temperatures, you might want to consider one of these uh, polar bottles the sports insulated ones. You can still squeeze them and everything, but they'll keep your bottles from freezing on your bike. Doesn't necessarily want to make you drink water on a ride <laughs> when you're drinking just a block of ice. Yeah, they don't look too bad, but they don't look as cool as the Ultra Dynamica water bottles, so we're not going to use these today. And generally, you know, style is more important than hydration on a day like this. Uh, I generally just, if I'm going on like a 25 mile ride like I'm going to do today, um, you know, two of these are just fine. These are uh, the new Ultra Dynamico uh, corn plastic water bottles. I would check them out. Real nice. Nice flow, too. Look at this. I've also got a safety triangle on the rear here. I don't know. I like the triangles ma ma mainly because I never remember to charge my taillights. And I know you could hook those up to the dynamo systems, and I'm just not into the dynamos that much anymore, honestly. Um, I, I wear a headlamp and I don't need to mess with any complicated stuff up there. I'm not touring as much, you know, LED and battery systems are so efficient now that I don't really think that it's that big of a deal. Those bat batteries on my headlamp last forever. I just use this uh, Nightcore uh, rechargeable headlamp, super small, lightweight, fits in my back pocket or, you know, side pocket of a bag. It's got uh, super simple buttons. Three settings there. One, three settings on the uh, blinky light, just two buttons. So this is uh, just fine for generally what I need if I'm not riding through the night or anything, but for a three hour, three hours of darkness or so, no problem with this. I would always have one of these regardless in your kit, whether or not you have a dynamo or not. Uh, it's nice when you have to stop or have a mechanical to get down and have a headlamp on you. Yeah, it makes life a lot easier in the darkness. Weekend rides, I'm carrying a Fab Zabs with me. So I'm going to go put that stuff on right now because I'm going to take a camera with me today because I want to finish this video for you and me. Not a bad day at all out here. This thing's all right. It's amazing how your body just gets used to temperatures 
you just get used to, you know, you get tuned in, the more you ride, the more you get outside and feel the air on your skin, the more your body gets used to it. So, you know, it's always those first few rides each year where it really stings. You know, you get that brain freeze. I find out, I only get that brain freeze, you know, a few times before my head gets used to it. And then, you know, I don't get it anymore. Uh, so, you know, I think a lot of it is just taking that first step. So get out there and take that first step. That's it. Is this, yeah. is this like interview style or yeah, what? This is like casting couch. Oh my God, am I going to have to take my clothes off? Yeah, yes. No, you're going to actually have to put your clothes on. On. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if I may. Yeah, have a seat. Why don't you tell us what you're wearing? You're about to go for a ride, am I correct? That's correct. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about your outfit? Okay, should we start head to toe? Or toe to head, I toe think. Toe to head. Yeah, toe okay, to head. so I've got my quacks. These are the Grand Tourer 2s. They're a gravel shoe. Keep going. Should, we're going to keep rolling. Okay, yeah. I've got these thick winter weight Ron's Bikes Hub Black socks. And in very frigid temperatures, Arya will also wear these overshoes over her shoes. I got a sweet deal on these fleece topo pants. These are size extra small. They do run tight, but I like that. 59 bones. And underneath those, or are you? Just, just undies. I think this is enough for today. On top, I have a, I have like a crop top like a wool crop top thing underneath here. And then I've got this turtleneck cycling thick sweater from Ibex that has shrunk a few times. So it's really supportive. And then, oh, this is a microphone. <laughs> and then over here I have a wool like gaiter. I really need it for my chin on these rides. It's the chin. And then the nose sometimes, but really it's the chin. I'm always like this. Yeah, I've been trying to grow a beard for a very long time. You know this. Here? So then up here, I have a Randy oh, Joe. Let's talk about the, you have glasses on. Oh yeah, I have these Ombra's blue blockers. It's a sunny day out, but um, I want to... I want to really feel the sun, but still want to be protected from the winds, you know? So I've got these on today. It's nice. Someone called them Jeffrey Dahmer glasses on me, which is like cute or whatever. I paid for everything that I'm wearing, by the way. So you can trust me, except for the socks. I didn't pay for the socks. She gets free socks, ladies and jabs. So what do you, what do you put on your hands? These gloves. So you use the, the deerskin, buckskin gloves and nothing else underneath them, even in this kind of weather? Yeah, I mean, it's 40 right now. And I've used like a liner in there and my hands just got too sweaty. You think you and compressed compressed the uh, insulation a little too much, perhaps? Yeah, and when you take it out, like you want more dexterity. Mm -hmm. Like you're just trying to grab something from the bag or like grab, like rip open a wrapper or something, you know, mm -hmm. more dexterity and you don't get that with a liner. It's like an extra thing to take off. Gotcha. And I think it's, it's warmer. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good ride, sweetie. So let's go put some bags on this bike and get ready for a, a ride. All right. Things are going to get a little sexy. And do a little thirst trapping for y'all here. All right, so with the sun going down, um, this ride's going to be in the mid 30s, 35 degrees. I'm dressing for right now, and so what we're going to start with these um, leather chamois wool shorts that we did with Team Dream last year. You remember these? So that's my base. That's what I'm putting on first, okay? So we've got wool, we've got leather, two natural fibers that are gonna breathe naturally, not gonna feel too clammy on my skin, and then generally gonna wanna put on my first sock layer. Everything that's next to my body is gonna be wool because there's gonna be a little bit of moisture mitigation going on there, and 
nothing does it better than wool. It doesn't matter what we come up with synthetically, it just does not match. Lighter wool socks, my summer weight wool socks. So I'm putting on a, a light wool sock first, and then over that I'm putting a heavy wool sock. It's like a ski sock. Got some uh, pretty wide toe box shoes. These uh, Stomp Locks uh, collaboration that I did with a brand in Japan, Stomp Locks. Um, as you can see, they've got a, a wide toe box. Uh, great for winter riding, wiggle your toes around inside. I could still move my toes inside. If I couldn't move my toes inside, I wouldn't pack so much sock in there because if you're squeezing all the dead air space out of there, you're not going to have any insulation. You're just going to have like dank dampness. Um, wool is great for drawing moisture out. Like a cotton sock is just going to keep it there. So uh, synthetic socks are going to draw it out, but they're also going to stink and feel clammy on your feet. If you've got some tighter cycling shoes, uh, less is more. Trust me, you know, uh, you, you know, try a lighter sock and wear an overshoe. Um, there's plenty of brands out there that offer semi-attractive overshoes. Of course, if you're into the road racing aesthetic, overshoes look very cool and should be worn year-round. Have you ever heard of Vapor Barrier Technology, VBL, Vapor Barrier Layer? Great for sleeping bags too. What it does is it's a, an impermeable membrane that you wear next to your skin. Sometimes people wear a, like a light layer underneath but I find it most effective for me personally, directly against my skin. And what this does is it prevents the vapor escaping and getting into your insulating layers, degrading your insulating layers. As you all know, moisture in your insulating layers, it's not insulating anymore. Uh, you know, there are some materials that insulate better than others when wet, but generally it's not a great thing to get your insulative layers wet. There is dedicated clothing featuring vapor barrier technology, or you could use your own technology, like one of these um, produce bags. What you're gonna do is just put it directly over your foot. Then you're gonna put your sock right over it there. There's no moisture escaping my micro microclimate into my greater microclimate. It works, to give it a try. And then when you're done with the produce bags, put your produce bag into it and put it in the drawer and pretend nothing ever happened. Let's say you took it too far. Your feet are freezing. You've got a long way home and you gotta get warm again. Um, I would recommend First, of course, doing some jumping jacks. You want to get that blood pumping again. And then take your bike and run with it. This is dramatized for your viewing pleasure. But if you just go for a run with your bike, you know, uh, run up a hill with it. And I find this pounding with my feet, just getting my feet moving. You could do a little kicking, shaking the blood down to the from my core down into my legs and into my feet. It really works for me. And uh, same thing goes with, same thing goes for your hands. This really works. You could do this while riding your bike too. Just shake the blood down to your digits. Shake your blood down to your digits. You can almost feel your, the blood coming in and radiating everything around me. I feel like I'm radiating. Do I look like I'm radiating? You can answer that in the comments. Probably messed my fenders up just laying my bike down like this. Something that is nice, if you have a stove or um, some sort of, you know, uh, radiator thing, is heat your shoes before you put them on. Preheat your shoes, folks. Then I'm going to put on two layers of these. This is this brand Merino Skins? All right, Merino Skins. Now these are, uh, I wear uh, a size medium, and then that's over my cycling shorts. 
And then over that I'm putting a size large. So this is a brand out of Australia. You can get them right off their website. Sometimes Rivendell has fun colors that they sell on their website. Um, but uh, they you know, take about two weeks to get here, but super high quality, direct from the manufacturer. Okay, so here I go. Got those on. Now you wanna pull these up as far as you can because the second you get on the bike, everything's gonna kind of bunch up. So pull them up just above, just below the cuff of your sock there. Already looking pretty good, huh? Oh, wow. Uh, next is gonna be also made by Merino Skins. I got this one through Rivendell, rivbike.com. Rivendell has a lot of cool woolly stuff. Check it out. I wear one of these every day in the winter time as my first layer. And then I'm putting suspenders on. These are just uh, like Dickies suspenders, standard suspenders. They'll make any, anything into a bib, essentially. It keeps your, uh, your shorts from riding down, your pants from riding down. Uh, some style points, of course. Tuck everything in there. And right over that, I'm putting an Icelandic wool sweater sheep that are native to very uh, windy, wet, and inclement areas have uh, naturally have wool that protects them from such elements. So make their wool into a sweater and you've got a, a real naturally technical piece of gear here, engineered by nature. Icelandic wool in particular, I found, is very lightweight, a little, lets a little bit of air pass through, but just enough to keep everything moving and not get anything too, too sweaty on the inside. And when it rains, it beads up on the outside. So I was just riding in the rain all day. And as you could see, it just kind of beads up on the wool here. Under here, I'm totally dry. Drier and more comfortable than I would be if I was wearing a rain cape or something like that. I'm gonna bring just a little wind jacket with me. The stuff that's in my bag, just in case it drops down to a temperature I'm not comfortable with, or if I need to stop and fix a flat, which I never have to do, right? No way. And I'm gonna switch around to these glasses, these ombros that have the no arms to stick out, to make the sides of my hat stick out. I got a wool hat that I'll put on here. Uh, my beard really insulates the my throat really well, but um, if I cut it too short, I'll tend to wear like a, like a neck gaiter, a wool neck gaiter. Buckskin is naturally like a, a is naturally a fantastic insulator um, and it doesn't smell, it's antimicrobial. So these change, these were like the biggest game changer for me with winter riding is realizing I only need these down to about 30 degrees. Below that, I'll size up to an extra, extra large. I generally wear an extra large here. I'll size up to an extra, extra large and put a light wool liner underneath. And then I could go down to as low as it gets here, which is, you know, 15 degrees or so. I'm not riding in anything colder than that. They don't seem like much. Super easy to take your hand out if you need to use your phone or something. Um, unbelievable. Uh, they even still insulate when they're wet. So it's not your average like gas station, uh, hardware store, um, leather glove, make sure it's genuine buckskin. That's the only stuff that's going to work. All right, so bags are on the bike. Put a snack in there. Like I said, I'm not going to be gone long. I'll put my camera in here, but that, that's the camera right here. It's looking at me. Kind of confusing. What a cool, what a cool bike, huh? Look at that, no plumber's crack. Not with these suspenders on. Is it nice to call it a plumber's crack though? If it was desirable to see my butt crack, I would show it to you. Going for a bike ride, huh? It already seems so late. It's like three o'clock. But I gotta make my friends on Strava proud.
something to bear in mind as I was as I was touching on earlier, you know, sweat is the enemy. You sweat, you die out here. I think that's what the survivor man used to say. The Canadian one. Remember him? Somewhere, sometime I heard some incredibly intelligent outdoor instructor say, you sweat, you die. Anyway, you want to try and stay away from overheating, no sweating. And what you could do, think of it as like a steam release valve, okay? You're building up all this heat, you know, expose a little bit of skin here and there. That's going to help, uh, you know, keep your back from sweating. If you start feeling your back get a little bit matted down and sweaty, um, I'll go down and I'll be like, okay, well, let's show off the legs a little bit. I'll turn these bad boys into some knickers. And just that little bit, you'd be surprised. That really regulates my body temperature. We'll tell the sweat glands and the rest of my body, you know, cool off a little bit. We're gonna let a little bit of steam out down here at the legs, at the gams, you know what I mean? And those are hot legs because they're, they're sexy legs. Another thing I'll do, I'll take my gloves all the way off on a climb or something, no problem at all. That really helps me flush out some heat. 